Okay. Here are some opinions that not everybody will agree with. I just have to say, Phantom Menace is better than Attack of the Clones. I'm 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 sorry for all the folks who really like clones. Attack of the Clones, the fucking worst dialogue in of the prequels. I'm not talking of all time or this of Star Wars, but like. Where's the dialogue? The fucking interactions with Padme and Anakin. There was some shit dialogue. There's some okay dialogue. There's some good dialogue. There was some good interactions. And I get it's supposed to be awkward, but some of it was like awkward to watch. You feel me? You feel me? And it's like the movie has some structure to it. It's like first act, third act, beginning, and middle. You can tell me the midpoint of the movie. Try and tell me the midpoint of Attack of the Clones. Where's the midpoint? Oh, where's, what's the climax? Oh, I know. You, know, you could describe the climax. What's the rising action point? T- tell me that. You can tell me that of the fault of the Phantom Menace, but you can't tell me that for Attack of the Clones. Proving that it's a better structure, better paced movie. Fucking, we got the best lightsaber, though. Best piece of Star Wars music. Qui-Gon J- uh, Fucking Liam Neeson has, does a better, like, um, than anyone acting in Attack of the Clones. <laughs> so it's like the acting's better, dude. The Actually, fucking like, uh, the lightsaber duel is better. Like, like it's it's just, Pammy actually does stuff, and the characters are better used. It's better pace. It's better structured. It's it feels like you're not just going between this and it can being awkward than to Obi Wan doing his thing. It's just you see what I mean. There's no structure to episode two. You know. Uh, yeah, that, that's. And Darth Maul is probably slightly cooler than Django. It's like, what is better in episode two? Like, oh, Anakin, you say. Oh, cool, he's not whining. That's the movie where Anakin's whining. And Anakin wasn't whining in episode one. He was just a, a cheery, happy kid that was innocent. And honestly. Honestly, Hayden did a worse job in episode two than, than Jake Lloyd. Jake Lloyd, you believed him as like a little kid. I, I mean, of course, I believed um, Anakin, but like some of you was like, uh, he was like, he almost was like stuttering and like, uh, he, he was like barely getting, sometimes he was barely getting out words in, in episode two, man. And it's not like where you really, I, I think uh, uh, Anakin, you know, you know, Hayden does, he does a decent job to be honest with y'all. I mean, Especially episode three, episode two, he does a fine job, but it's like some of his expressions and all. It's, it's a little, some of it's a little stilted. Okay, oh, it's about politics. I mean, like episode two, it takes itself so serious, and like episode one, it's like an adventure movie with the be- what's the best world building in all of the movies, and the best lightsaber duel, um, piece of music, uh, lightsaber, uh. And duo, Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan are the best duo of Star Wars. I could do a whole video on once. But, like, you tell me, go Char Jar. I never was annoyed by Char Jar that much. I'm sorry, man. To me, he was just like, okay, this, this is the character made by the kids for the kids to see it through them. And he's just being clumsy and dumb and just speaking, talking like a, a Jamaican stereotype version of Al Molly. That's not really annoying to me. I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and another, you know. Ooh, Raekwon is not a top five member of the Wu Tang. I know he's probably, uh, probably the most. Best emotional story time. He has only both Cuban links, pr- arguably the best Wu Tang Clan album. But we look if you ask if you ask a person who is who is more consistent with albums, Old Dirty Bastard or Raekwon, who is more consistent with albums, Ghostface Killer or Raekwon? They're gonna of course they're gonna say Ghostface. You uh, <laughs> then you ask us, you know. Probably a Wu fan who's more uh, consistent with albums, good making good album after good album. Method Man or Raekwon? <laughs> They're gonna probably gonna say Method Man. 
and you're gonna be like, well, yeah, only built for Cuban links is only classic. Yeah, that's the only album with classic material. You can argue, oh, Jesus only got liquid swords. And I, I see your point. I see your point. Proto Tools has paper plates, which I, that, that's that's a classic diss track. Arguably a top three paper plates. Um, it's arguably a top three diss track of all time. And yet that's on an album which some do not consider a classic. That that shows you that like you know this man still had classic material after you know he's, he's a very acclaimed and loved project. And Raekwon, not really, not really expected that. I mean, he had uncontrolled substances. I mean, expected that. Show me a verse, but like by Raekwon, that's as good as like f- Triumph by Inspect the Deck. Oh, Cream, his verse on Cream. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Um, Inspect the Deck is like, um, protect your neck. Well, you, he he doesn't have like a verses ever as good, and you know, right? You know, Inspect the Deck also. You know, he has a. He has a he has a classic. He has some controlled substances, classic, you know. And he's like, he's, he's more word, you know. He's more of a word. He's like, he's not. He, Raekwon is good, but he's like a storyteller, you know, with with a with a very good flow, with a very good flow and a very good pace and, and beat selection and all that. I feel like he's not one of the more uh, uh technical ones. I feel like he's not inspected deck. He's like ODB. Has more raw style. Ghostface Killer is arguably the best overall rapper of all time. Uh, Jizz like he's not gonna he's not gonna beat Jizza. He's not gonna beat Method Man. He's gonna beat Ghostface Killer. He's not gonna beat Inspector Deck or Old Dirty Bastard. Rayquan is like not a top five member of the Woo. <laughs> and my last opinion. These are just three opinions I got. Pepsi is better than Coke. Yeah, you know, I mean, some will be like, well, Coke, it's more bubbly. I, I, I don't care because I can barely taste the sweetness. It's not sweet enough. You can be like, oh, cold Coke, Mexican Coke. Oh, oh, I just put it in like the, you know, like, you know, freeze it. The folks who really like, really like Coke like that do not drink just regular Coke straight out, you know, the can straight out the thing and like. Who does that? It it's not sweet. It's not. It's it's somewhat bitter with the flavoring, it's somewhat bland and vanilla. And yet, cher- you know, Pepsi has a more cherry flavor to it, and it's like Pepsi. You know, I I understand it's not the most bubbly drink you could have. Some will say it's flat. Fair, fair. But the bubbles aren't really like I'm not tasting the bubbles more than the actual flavor. The pub- the bubbles don't overpower the flavor, which is the problem with Coke, and I don't have that. It doesn't stay in my teeth like Coke. Pepsi is sweet. It satisfies my sweet tooth. It's you know it's got a more distinct flavor. Coke, it's got you know how do I put this? A sweet, ra- raspy. Like cherry flavor to it, and it's, it's more smooth as a drink. Um, it's 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 harsh enough, but it has as much smoothness. Cause Coke is not smooth in any way, so Pepsi has some spice to it. I want oh Coke so spice, Pepsi so spice. Bro, that's, that's not spicy. I lay my kiss. I'm done. I'll take you to the candy shop. There's the water. Okay.